Good Sunday morning, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. A pretty quiet, if not frosty and cold morning across much of the area and some fairly widespread reports of frost across the Mid-South, but so far not getting anything in the way of other reports as in precipitation. Yesterday's snow, ice, rain, whatever else we got mixed in there is basically gone and a bad memory at this point in time for much of the area, but a interesting little side detour into around the winter weather types of precipitation that we have and can get at this time of the year. It's not exactly, again, very widespread in April, but it still can happen. So again, nice little surprise there, but we will be getting back to that warmer weather in the course of the next several days. Coming up in just a little bit, we'll take a look at your weather pictures. We'll take a look at the weather for tax day, which is on the horizon out there about 10 days out. So if you haven't filed your taxes yet, at least you won't have the weather to worry about. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Plus, if you felt the earthquake yesterday. It was a minor one, but it was still possible to feel that around northeast Arkansas. If you felt it, the United States Geological Survey and our own Center for Earthquake Research and Information at the University of Memphis wants to hear from you. It's called citizen science. You don't need a PhD to participate in studies like this by supplying the information. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. If you've never joined us before, welcome to Weather Overtime. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Seven to ten day forecast right here. For Forecast scrolling by in the bottom on the blue bar right there, and all of this information available at this website, wreg.com slash weather. Questions, concerns, ideas, complaints, if you absolutely must, all you have to do is just email me here at austin.onic at wreg.com, and I'll be glad to see what we can do for you. Again, drop your locations into the bar down below into the comments section. Give us a little bit of an idea as to what it looks like weather-wise around your location out there. As Bruce Lawshey points up, uh, let's see how many seasons should we expect this week? Give or take, you know, maybe two or three ought to do it, but at least we won't be doing all total four at this point in time. And don't forget, we got summertime out there where we can get about 11 and a half months of 90s plus. So that's out there lurking someplace. So please keep that in mind. Questions about the forecast, drop them into the comments section. Again, we cover East Arkansas, North Mississippi, and West Tennessee. Anything outside of that, we'll do our best to get to, but mainly we focus right on that area that we call the Mid-South. Right now, we're expecting, again, a fairly cool morning coming up but the clouds are going to be on the increase. We started off with a lot of sunshine, some beautiful conditions out there, if not a bit on the brisk side, but more clouds expected into later on tonight, and maybe the chance of a little bit of light rainfall out into the area for tonight, but we're talking about bare minimal chances. We'll explain that coming up in just a little bit. Welcome to everybody else in the Mid-South checking on in. Uh, Earl Spellings, look like, look, you need to do something, it's cold. Okay, well, we'll do something about that. I'm not in management, I'm in PR, but uh, that's upstairs. So thank you very much uh, for letting us know about uh, what we need to do there. Thanks, everybody else, for checking in. Requesting good weather from Cordova. Riyad Gauche, thank you very much for checking in. Faye Ridgey, hope I'm saying that right. Two-point typeface from Dallas. Thank you very much. Southern Oklahoma, Angela Tony, for checking on through. What will the temperature be at 9.30 a.m. in Germantown? Jody Radikoff fisher uh, again, looking at temperatures back in the upper 30s to lower 40s, and not much better than that for the time being, and also some pretty chilly conditions in there for right now. Lovell Joe, who got them Grizzlies tickets? Well, not me. I haven't had a chance to go to a game due to my schedule, but thank you again for asking. 32 degrees, East Memphis. Ernest Holton, thank you very much, and good morning from Cordova, LaShonda Banks, Somerville. Thanks for checking on in. From the area around Clarksdale, Mississippi, weather bug camera from Heidelberg Elementary. A little bit of sunshine and blue skies showing up from early this morning. Ventress Hall, looking back toward the Student Union and the trees of the Grove from the Ole Miss campus in Oxford, Mississippi. Decent blue skies, a few clouds, but at least getting a little bit more sunshine on the Ole Miss campus today. Another college campus, Rhodes College, with a lot more clouds seen back to the northwest on the weather underground camera and a live view from downtown Memphis from our own tower cam looking upstream on the Mississippi River back toward the north. Mud Island back there, downtown Memphis buildings out across the area there, and a fairly placid, if not cold, morning out across much of the area for there. Uh, Michelle Short, about what time was the earthquake? Stay tuned. We'll talk about that coming up in just a few minutes at this time. And thanks to everybody else for checking in for this morning out there. Uh, Joe Lovell, it's Lovell, not Love L. Okay, well, sorry about that. Sorry, I must have included an extra L on there. Anyway, for the Mississippi River, looking at numbers heading back upwards again. Now, there are stages of floods on the Mississippi, 
as there are across the entire United States about how bad the floods will get. On Tuesday, the flood stage will be at what's called action stage. That's when these bottomland areas around the farmlands start to flood and some cities on the river back up toward Carothersville, Osceola, start to see a little bit more floodwaters moving on through as all that water from north of us drains into the channel. So we'll see action stage for the next couple of days. Looks like the next crest is going to be somewhere in the next week or so. We'll keep up to date with the National Weather Service to keep you updated on this. This doesn't mean that, again, we're going to be seeing major flooding. It just means that we're going to be seeing a lot more water heading downstream. But again, if you have businesses or farms or anything like that, that on the Mississippi River, you will be seeing higher levels coming up into around the next couple of days. CR Suddeth, we'll talk about that in just a little bit. The earthquake possibility uh, from what we saw yesterday and possibility of you being able to check out uh, more about that coming up in just a bit. Storm Tracker 3S radar, no precipitation as opposed to what we saw yesterday. Rain, sleet, snow across much of the Mid-South. Very light, but it was still out there. And again, we'll be looking for more potential of that in rain later on. Temperatures, lot Live numbers on WeatherNet 3, mid to upper 30s. With these winds out there, we have some wind chills down into the mid 20s this morning. So definitely want to make certain that you are bundled up before you head off to church or Sunday school or wherever you may be going to as we go throughout the rest of the morning. Now, temperatures will be a lot milder today than what they were yesterday. Yesterday, we spent some 25 degrees below normal. That gives you an idea of just how powerful that punch of cold air was. Today's temperatures, we're going to start off again in the 40s by about mid-morning. Through this afternoon, mid to upper 50s, the gray colors on screen, that's the cloud cover that we're looking at. And then back to the north of us into around southern and central Missouri, Rain mixed with snow again. Poplar Bluff, Cape Girardeau, St. Louis, Rolla, Jeff City, Lake of the Ozarks could see some more rain mixed with snow. Now, some of this might drop into the Mid-South area late this afternoon into this evening, but notice again with temperatures like what we're seeing here, we're going to be looking at numbers back in the 50s and upper 40s way too warm for anything but rainfall. And if we do get anything, it's going to be from a line around Dyersburg through the boot heel to north of Jonesboro, and that's about the extent of any rain we're going to be picking up tonight and into very early tomorrow morning. That storm system rolls out pretty quickly and is gone by the time we hit very early tomorrow morning. Another storm system approaches the area on Tuesday. It's not a big one, but it will give us another chance of some rain late this week possibility of some stronger weather heading our way. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. Good morning to everybody who's checking in from across the Mid-South and points beyond. Thanks a lot for joining us on Weather Overtime. Forecast again for today, about 10 to 15 degrees below normal for this time of the year, but about 10 to 15 degrees above where we were yesterday for much of the Mid-South. Now again, those chances of rainfall Past about dinner time, yes, but we're talking about a less than 10% coverage chance, and that mainly for areas up around the Boot Hill, northwest Tennessee, and northeast Arkansas, and that should be about it. One or two of those could linger into very early tomorrow morning around rush hour, but once again, we're just not looking at that much activity out there. And then clearing out for Monday, storm system after that rolls through Tuesday morning. Again, another very slight chance of some precipitation, less than 10% coverage chance for the area expected, so this is not gully washer material by any stretch of the imagination. And a little cooler on Tuesday as that storm system rolls through north of us. It's going to drag down some cooler air, so we will see some slightly cooler temperatures on Tuesday. Back close to normal on Wednesday. Plenty of sunshine, no rain there. Also on Thursday, mid to upper 70s by the end of the week. Friday and Saturday, the Storm Prediction Center is already seeing the potential of maybe some severe weather coming on through. Now, because it is, again, so far out from the current time frame, it's a little difficult to see. There are signs that we could see some rougher weather coming our way, but right now there is no official slight, moderate, high, anything like that forecast going on. We'll be monitoring that throughout the rest of the next several days, and by about Wednesday, we'll have a better idea as to what's coming our direction. So definitely want to stay tuned for more about what may be occurring later on this week. Now, toward about tax day, we'll get a bit cooler, then a bit warmer, and then we'll dry out by just a little bit. So again, for those of you who haven't filed yet and are going to be heading to the post office next Next Tuesday. Remember, it's not on the 15th this year. It's actually on the 17th. There's a couple of extenuating circumstances. Again, we're not seeing the uh, the April 15th falls on a Sunday. It usually goes to the next Monday. 
But because Monday is Emancipation Day in Washington, D.C., the holiday again postponed tax day for another day. So tax day this year will be on April the 17th on Tuesday. So that gives you at least a little bit of about another 48 hours to get your taxes in for just a little bit. But at least the weather is not going to be anything in the way of a concern at this point in time. More of our weather, check out wreg.com slash weather for more details, and we'll have more on the forecast again throughout the rest of the week. All right, earthquake information. Again, this happened yesterday around northeast Arkansas, very close to around Blytheville. We did not get anything in the way of huge amounts of energy passing through the Earth's crust. The helicorders, the uh, basically the seismograms from the Center for Earthquake Research and Information at the University of Memphis did record the earthquake. It was a short one. It was very, again, not that powerful. It was about a 2.3 magnitude, and it happened in and around northeast Arkansas. Here's the cool thing. If you go to my social media web pages, you can find this link on here about the earthquake and find out more about what you can do. There's a link on there that says it's a Did You Feel It report, and from the United States Geological Survey, or from the Center for Earthquake Research and Information at the University of Memphis. You click on that link, you fill out the details, and again, you have the opportunity to tell the seismologist what you felt and when. What good does that do? Your information can help seismologists, graduate students, professors study what happens under our feet, especially when it comes to this New Madrid Fault. A lot more information can help out, and it's called citizen science. It's you being able to participate and tell the scientists what you felt, and those reports can help the scientists study how earthquake energy goes outwards from an epicenter. That's the type of information they need, and you can help provide that. If you'd like to know more, memphis.edu slash CERI or earthquakes.usgs.gov for more information. Again, this was not powerful. It probably was not felt by a lot of people, but this was one of the biggest earthquakes that we have seen in quite some time in and around this area. So again, possibly pretty rare that anybody actually felt anything, but if you did feel it, please consider going to fill out a Did You Feel It report, and that'll help out a lot on that. On my Facebook page throughout the rest of the day, if you'd like to tune in there at facebook.com slash austinonicwreg, group called Severe Weather Europe has a lot of great pictures from the continent and a lot of information about what goes on in weather worldwide. They're offering a severe weather tutorial that's going to be starting up in the next couple of weeks. We'll be featuring more about that. Less than a week until the March for Science 2018. Last year, great to be able to see the advocacy for science. A lot of people, again, getting out and promoting science and backing up, again, more information about what goes on and how cool science is as a career. I should know, again, weather science is a big thing that I do as a meteorologist. So if you'd like to know more, find out more about the hashtag March for Science coming up. And more about the climate controversy. Again, Yale University getting a lot more details with their Climate Connections Department and finding common ground about the climate controversy. If you'd like to know more about these, stay tuned. They'll be posted on Facebook coming up a little bit later on today. Weather pictures, thanks to everybody out there. Louis Haskett, frequent contributor from Northeast Arkansas. Sun trying to pop on through in portions of the area there. From raising girls around Yum Yum, Tennessee. I don't think I've ever been there before, but a little bit of sunshine through the cloud cover and a little bit on the blustery side yesterday. And from Humboldt, Tennessee, frequent contributor James R. Gulledge. Very nice view of at least a little bit of sunshine as the clouds managed to make their way out of the picture there. If you've got pictures, we'd love to see them. What you just saw was some of our top contributors, but they're the ones who continually send in the pictures, so that's who I feature. But if you'd like to get your pictures on here, we'd love to see them, but we can't show them if you don't send them. You kind of see the disconnection there. So if you'd like to tweet them to me, aonic underscore WRIG3, Instagram, aonic no underscore necessary WRIG3, and again on my Facebook page at AustinOnic WRIG. Be glad to have you along for the ride there. Last two Skywarn Spotter meetings coming up this week and next, both postponements from earlier dates. This one postponed from last week when we had the severe weather threat around the area. This will be at Brighton, Tennessee, this Tuesday, April the 10th at 6.30 p.m., at the Tipton County EOC. Next Wednesday, postponed from that winter event we had back in January or February, April 18th, next week at 6.30 p.m. at Phillips County in Helena, West Helena, Arkansas, at Phillips Community College. These classes from Skywarn and the National Weather Service teach you what to look for 
when severe weather threatens. And the more people we have trained to watch what goes on in their particular area, call that information back to the National Weather Service by phone or by amateur radio. That's the information the National Weather Service can tell people like me what's going on so I can let everybody else know on our severe weather broadcast. That helps to get information out to get people, people safe. You can tell them you saw, again, something like a rotating wall cloud, baseball-sized hail, whatever it is that the storm is producing, your information could help save lives around the Mid-South area just by watching what goes on. Now, once again, this is a spotter course. This is not a chase course. You do not chase storms unless you have been properly trained, period, end of sentence. That's the way it is. Let's all be safe out there. Again, you don't want to get yourself or anyone else into trouble because you don't know how to chase storms properly. So spotters, yeah, great place to start. If you want to chase, learn from the experts, and then you can do it properly later on. But this right here is a great way to start. It's also a great way for kids who may be a little scared of severe weather that they can get more details and give them a little bit more control over an uncontrollable situation. So please consider taking the course coming up a little bit later on this week. And if you can't do it, at the meetings. We have information about where you can take the Skywarn course online, and you can email me about that. Again, coming up later on, I'll send that along to you. Tune in for my forecast throughout the rest of the weekend on the East Arkansas Broadcast Network stations. And of course, I'll have more on whether where the troops are coming up on my Facebook page, Periscope, and Twitter at the bottom of the hour or just afterwards. So stay tuned for another netcast coming up here in just about 15 minutes or so, and be glad to have you along for that. Again, questions, concerns, anything else at this point in time? Again, let me know, austin.onic at wreg.com. Phyllis White, what time was the earthquake? Uh, just before 1 o'clock yesterday afternoon, and that was in northeast Arkansas, close into the area of around uh, Blytheville, Arkansas. So, again, that's something to take a look at there. Uh, grandson was the last, felt the one last week in Missouri couple 1.5. Yeah, they can be felt if they're fairly weak, but it does happen out there for right now. So again, if you are going to be sticking around for more on the forecast, we'll have more details coming up tonight on News Channel 3 at 5 and 10, so stay tuned for more there. And we'll have more details about the rest of the forecast again through the weekend, and Todd Demers has more coming up tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak. Lots more throughout the rest of the weekend, so stay tuned for more with News Channel 3 live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee in the WREG News Channel 3 Severe Weather Center Studios. I'm meteorologist just Austin Onik. Thanks for joining us for today and keep it tuned to News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the weekend.